Hello and welcome back. Remember that education is the important first step in your desire to enter into the great profession of interior design. Today I'm going to be covering with you a few simple basic building codes. This video is going to provide you with good resourceful information that you can use either now and also in the future. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video with others to stay informed with more information from this channel. Let's go ahead and dive in. In the field of design and also construction, we start with a dream. After the dream, you now have a design that you're creating and after that design, it is ready for build. But before all of this, there are a few important things that I want to share and think that designers should be knowledgeable of. These things are known as our International Building Codes, IBC. Now there are a lot of codes that we will cover at the end of this video. However, I want to share with you upfront a few important codes for interior spaces and dwellings as it pertains to our interior dimensions and means of egress. These two particular items are something that really stands out that I really want to pour our attention to today. Right now, we are inside of a residential property and we're at the final stage. But what I want to do right now is go ahead and go over those international building codes in terms of residential spaces and habitable spaces. The first thing we'll be talking about is covering these ceiling heights. So, according to our international building codes, we need to know that a room in a residential space needs to have a minimum required measurement of ceiling height from the above finished floor height to the ceiling of seven feet, six and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use my tape measure to just check and verify our ceiling heights in this space. If I just put my tape measure right down on the floor, it's gonna measure all the way up. And it has a ceiling height of eight feet. So of course it is more than seven feet, six and a half inches, which is great. You can always go even higher, but we do meet this minimal requirement according to our international building codes. One tip to let you know is that when you have a laundry space, storage, or even a bathroom, those ceiling height requirements have a minimum of at least seven feet. So they are a little bit smaller than your habitable room spaces. However, they can go taller or just as much as it is throughout the entire house at eight feet. But as long as they meet that seven feet in those spaces, you're good to go. Just a recap of those interior dimensions, we know again that according to the International Building Code 1208.2, there is a minimum ceiling height requirement of seven feet, six and a half inches for habitable spaces. Other habitable spaces, such as your storage areas, your laundry rooms, bathrooms, and even included in that are your kitchens, there is a minimum ceiling height of seven feet. There's also another international building code of 1208.1, and that is talking about the minimum room widths. And what this states is that every dwelling must have a habitable room with at least minimum 120 square feet and a second habitable room of 70 square feet. At this time, kitchens aren't required to have a minimum room width. International Building Code 1208.3 discusses the minimum area of a dwelling. And it tells us in this code that there needs to be at least a three foot clear passageway between our countertop fronts and appliances in our kitchens and also our countertop front and walls. 
Moving on to our interior doors, which is International Building Code 1008.1.1. Again, inside of this residential space, I would like to talk about more of those International Building Codes in terms of our interior doors in your residential dwellings. There is a minimum requirement that a door must have a height of at least 80 inches. That's six foot eight inches in height. This is the standard requirements. Of course, they can be a little bit taller. You have seven foot doors, you have 10 foot doors. It's just really up to whatever is the aesthetics of that property. However, that minimum requirement of 80 inches is a part of our international building codes. Another thing about our doors is that they must swing where they're not obstructing the flow of traffic or the means of egress. And that normally means that these doors must swing into a wall. In this instance, we have our door swinging into the wall in this direction, but also on this side, you have a door and also a window. Now this window can be your means of egress whenever there's a situation of a fire, for instance, so we want to make sure that this closet door does not obstruct that means of egress. So we have a, a good distance here between the door and our window. Another piece of information is your door locks or any locking mechanisms. They must be a measurement of at least 34 inches above the finished floor or a max of 48 inches. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and verify and check this. And our door handle here is at 37 inches. So we are in our means of the requirements of our international building codes. So as long as this lock mechanism is at least 34 to 48 inches on center of this door above the finished floor, we're good to go here as well. Thank you. Another code that I want to address is International Building Codes 129.2 and 129.3. And this is discussing our life and safety and means of egress. In a residential space, whether you are rehabbing or updating anything new or old, there must be two means of emergency egress in a room. This is definitely something that is a part of our international building codes, again, that we all need to know. When we are speaking of two means of egress, it can consist of a door, such as here, and then also our windows. With our windows, there needs to be a minimum height of 44 inches from the finished floor to the window seal. And then there also needs to be at least 20 inches for that opening. And measuring this one here, this window opening is at 29 inches. And then there also needs to be a minimum height of 24 inches. And right now we're at 52. But when we go to open up our window, just to verify that we're still in our international building code requirements, we have an opening window of 28 inches this way, and then also 24 inches in height. This is perfect, so in case if there is a fire, a fireman or any rescue individual can come through this window and help anyone that is in duress at that time. Another thing with our doors is that we already know our doors need to swing inward so that they are not obstructing that means of egress to get in and out of this room in case of an emergency. Again, these are all things that are very important that you must know when you are rehabbing a property or even purchasing a property. You just want to make sure that you are meeting the international building codes for life and safety.
So that about covers everything. The International Building Codes, or IBC, are updated every three years. And there are regulation about the practices in commercial construction. However, it does transfer into some residential. The International Residential Codes also are updated every three years. And they contain information and regulations applying to residential construction and they include both new practices as well as any remodeling issues. Another place that you all can look is the Michigan Residential Building Codes, which are updated every six years. The information from this video can be stored either in your memory bank or you can again save this video so that way you can have some checks and balances or any future work. Maybe you're on a construction site or as a designer, you're just looking and saying, hmm, that door height looks to be a little bit short. Let me go back and just refresh my mind and look at what the international building code is for the interior door heights. Definitely use this information now or in the future as you dive deeper into this field of design. It is definitely good to know and it is good to always have that extra knowledge so that you can have those checks and balances of gun amongst other trades.